So, you've got a brand new synthesizer, you've got Ableton, how do you get them to work together? In this video, I'll walk you through the super basics of connecting your synthesizer to your computer. I'll show you how to integrate it in your live set, how to synchronize it with it. And I will also show you some nice workflow tips, how to recall presets within your live set, how to record automation, and also how to add unlimited LFOs, envelopes, and any kind of modulator to your synthesizer through Ableton. We'll also see what you can do if you want to record multiple tracks with the same synthesizer without worrying if you're going to lose your settings. And as usual, I've made a tiny little Max for Life device, which is free and is going to make your life so much easier. So let's deal with the easy part first, connecting the synthesizer to the computer. Step one, connect the audio out of your synthesizer to an input or two inputs if your synthesizer is stereo on your audio interface. Step two, activate that input or inputs in Ableton. Go to Preferences, Audio, Input Config, and select the inputs. You can also name them here. Now, if you only want to play on your synthesizer keyboard and record audio on Ableton, create an audio track and select these inputs on the Audio From menu, and you're done. But it's much better to also have a MIDI connection to your synthesizer. That way you can sequence it from Ableton, you can recall presets, and you can automate its parameters. So let's do this. Step 1. Does your synthesizer have MIDI over USB? Probably yes. So, connect the synthesizer and the computer with a USB cable and you're good to go. Now you have MIDI going from your computer to your synth and vice versa. No USB or you don't want to use USB? Then you need to connect everything using old school MIDI cables. Now to do this, you either need a MIDI interface or an audio interface that also has MIDI in and out. So. Connect a MIDI cable from the out port of your MIDI interface to the in port on your synthesizer. This will send MIDI from your computer to the synthesizer. You can also connect a MIDI cable from the out port of your synthesizer to the in port on your MIDI interface. This will send MIDI from the synthesizer to the computer. Step 2. Activate the MIDI ins and outs in live. Go to Preferences MIDI and then in the MIDI port section in the bottom, Tick the track boxes, both for the in and for the out ports. You can also tick the sync box for the out port, which will send your current project tempo to your synthesizer so that you can sync to it. Very useful if your synthesizer has tempo syncable LFOs, arpeggiators, delay effects, etc. Step 3. Create a MIDI track and add an external instrument device to it. Now, choose your synth in the MIDI 2 menu and choose the audio input you set up previously in the Audio From menu. That's it! Now Ableton can send MIDI data to your synthesizer and trigger it, and you can pretty much treat it like you would a VST synth. Almost. There's a little issue that we need to solve if your synthesizer has a keyboard. If you're connecting a synth module, then you can skip this part. But if your synthesizer has a keyboard and you're using that keyboard to record MIDI parts, think about this. When you're pressing a key on the synthesizer, the synth is sending audio to your computer. It is also sending MIDI, which Ableton routes back to the synthesizer. So the synthesizer gets triggered twice, once directly from the keyboard and once again via Ableton. Also, if you disarm the track and press a key on the synthesizer, it will play anyway, since it responds internally to its keyboard, whether or not it's armed inside Ableton. So, as you might have realized, the solution to this is to somehow disconnect the keyboard from the synthesizer. So the keyboard only sends MIDI to live, and then live can forward this MIDI to the synthesizer and trigger it. This is usually called the local off function, and you need to find it on your synthesizer and activate it. It will be where the global settings of your synth are. Check the mind. Okay, so now we've hooked everything up and hopefully everything is working. So what can we do with this setup? Well, obviously, we can record MIDI and we can edit it. And we can use all kinds of MIDI effects in Ableton, like arpeggiators or chord generators, to trigger the synthesizer. But let me show you now some little tricks that will make your life much easier. After you've recorded a MIDI clip, go to the Clip View and click on the Launch tab. At the bottom, you can select the patch number and the bank number of the sound that MIDI clip uses. So you can tell your synthesizer which sound to load depending on the MIDI clip that it's going to play. Check this out. So 
So this will be now saved with the set and you don't need to remember what presets you were using on all your different projects. Now, get ready for the big boy stuff. How can we add LFOs, envelopes and modulators to the synth through Ableton? And how do we do automation in arrangement? The answer is MIDI CC. Now, if you don't know what MIDI CCs or MIDI control changes are, don't worry, it's pretty simple. In general, think of them as unique ID numbers assigned to all the different parameters that can be controlled on your synthesizer. If we send a MIDI CC message to a synthesizer, we are basically sending it a pair of numbers. The first number identifies what we want to control. That's the CC number. And the second number sets the value of that controller. That's the CC value. So, if we know all the CC numbers that correspond to all the parameters on your synthesizer, we can effectively control the synth remotely from inside Ableton. Now, there are two problems with that. First, there doesn't seem to be a consistent correspondence between MIDI CCs and common synthesizer parameters. There should be one, but synth manufacturers seem to do whatever they want. They assign whatever CC they want to whatever parameter they like. And second, Ableton doesn't make this as easy and simple as it should be. But don't worry, it's still super doable and super straightforward once you know what you need to do. So, how do we know what MIDI CC corresponds to what parameter on the synthesizer? The old school answer is read the manual. Go to the end of the manual and there's usually a section called MIDI implementation chart and go through all the tiny numbers and find out, which is super boring, I know. Uh, but I think I've got a lazy solution for you. Insert the MIDI monitor, MIDI effect, on your synth track. On the right-hand side, click on Flow. Now, arm the track and move the knob or whatever it is you want to control on your synthesizer. Ooh, look at that. The synth is transmitting the CC number. It's the one on this column. The other number is the current value. Perfect. So now we know the MIDI CC number that we want to send. How do we send it? Well, Ableton doesn't really do this. So I made a super simple max for life device to sort this out. External CC. So go to the link in the description and download it. It's free. You're welcome. And if you like what we do, buy us a coffee. So check this out. You can load the external CC device on your track. Select if you want to control a pot or a button or a switch. Input the CC number you want to control in the box. You can even write the parameter name that you're controlling down here, so you don't forget. And now, the big controller in the middle is sending out MIDI CC data. And you can automate it like any other parameter in life. You can also map it to a modulation device, like an LFO, or our other device, Super Shaper. So even if your synth doesn't have enough LFOs or envelopes, you can add as many as you want from inside life. That's pretty amazing. And obviously, you can stack as many external CC devices as you like. Breaking news! Yesterday, Ableton Live 12 was announced, and surprise, surprise, Ableton are introducing a new device called CC Control, which seems to solve all of these problems. So you will be able to send CCs directly to your external synthesizers, and you will also be able to do automation in arrangement. But until then, which probably is February, external CC is your friend, so go get it. And if you're watching this from the future, I guess all this has been sorted. I hope you're enjoying Ableton 27. And let me know in the comments, how warm does it get? Now, I should briefly mention that you can also draw modulation envelopes inside the MIDI clip. To do that, go to the clip view and go to the envelope tab. Then select MIDI control on the left menu and from the right menu, select the MIDI CC number that corresponds to the parameter that you want to modulate on your synthesizer. You can pretty much ignore the controller description since, as I said before, every synth manufacturer seems to do whatever they want. So now we've set everything up, we've recorded MIDI, we've recalled patches, we've programmed automation. What do we do if we want to record multiple MIDI tracks with the same synthesizer playing at the same time? Well, obviously, we can't unless you buy the same synthesizer multiple times. So what we need to do is convert our track into audio so we can then free up our synthesizer to record a new MIDI track. So let's see how we can do that. I usually create an audio track 
select my synth MIDI track as the input, arm it, and record the part in audio. Now, you can delete the original MIDI track, or if you want to come back to it later and make changes, just turn the external instrument device off, so that MIDI track stops communicating with the synthesizer. That's it! I hope you found this useful. If you need any more help, leave a comment, or come and find me directly in our Discord server. The link is in the description, where you can also find the link to get our external CC device, and also our other free devices, like Super Shaper. Wait, Super Shaper? What's that? Well, <laughs> click here and find out. See you in a bit. Bye-bye.